What's going on you guys? Full steer and I'm back with another video. Today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Shivana jungle guide. She's probably one of the better junglers you can play right now. She has insane clear speed and carry potential. So if you guys are excited for this guide, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And yeah, let's get right into it. Now, initially, you want to start with press the attack on Shivana. That is pretty much a no-brainer, honestly. The other ones here aren't that good. And in the other trees, there's really nothing that compares to press the attack for Shivana Because she auto-attack Q something and then it's instantly going to proc press the attack. Which means it instantly boosts all the damage sources. That you do to that target and that's going to just be way too much damage increase especially because you deal hp based damage and that's going to ramp up a lot so press the attack is 100 percent the one you want to go for then moving on you definitely want triumph on shivana because it gives you 20 percent uh, sorry 12 percent of your missing health back and since shivana has quite an enormous health pool if you get low on that and you kill someone 12 percent of your missing health can easily be like three to four hundred health which is just going to get back straight up so that's very much the one you definitely want to get. The other ones here aren't useful at all. You find obviously mana, no. And then overheal, not really either. Because you're not really lifestealing all that much on Shivana. So yeah. Triumph into Alacrity. Straight up attack speed is definitely the one to go for. I would switch out Alacrity for the Tenacity one. If you're facing high CC comps. So yeah, and then you can combine this Tenacity one with your Merc Treads. And then you can really hard counter heavy CC comps. That will pretty much be the only swap in the other case. In Yeah, I would just go Alacrity because of the attack speed. It's very useful in Shivana and just helps you a lot in just killing people a lot faster. So that's the one to go for. Now, the last one, definitely Coupe de Grasse. The, this one's very much useless on Shivana because you yourself are building quite a lot of HP. So, for that reason, you're not going to really find any champions that are going to have 2,000 more max health than you. So... Not too worth it. And last stand, you're not really going to get low all that much on Shivana. You're quite tanky. You do have quite a lot of, like, burst damage and all that. So it's better to go for Coupe de Grasse because you're more likely to put someone below 40% than it is for you to get, like, really low and gain all the damage from last stand, last stand instead. And that's the initial tree. The secondary tree. This might come as a surprise to some of you guys because a lot of Shivana players... There's a couple of options on Shivana. I will talk over them and I'll talk which one is best and why to go for which one. So first up in a Domination Tree, you have the option of going Zombie Ward with Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous Hunter will work pretty well on Shivana because your E procs count as Ravenous Hunter damage. So as soon as you start hitting people for max health with your E, you will, your Ravenous Hunter will kick in and it will boost up your health quite easily. Which can count up to quite a lot of health, uh, to quite a lot of lifesteal. But, yeah, and, and then the other one to combine this with is really only the Zombie Ward. Because the other ones here aren't that great. But the Zombie Ward is actually a really good one. It will get nerfed, uh, I believe, next patch in 8.2. I believe it's getting nerfed. But even still, then, this would be an option to go with if you really want to go Domination. I wouldn't recommend Domination, but that would be the option for this one. Now, here, this is a very common Shivana setup that I see a lot of people use on Shivana right now. It's the celerity for so for the base movement speed increase. And then also when you pop your W, you're going to get more movement speed that way. So then the celerity will slightly boost your damage as well. And then water walking for obviously faster roam speed. You can also go gathering storm. I see some people do that on Shivana as well. Because of the fact that um, you are kind of a scaling champion. So gathering storm does work well with that. And it boosts up your scaling power even more. So that's the options I see people use for this sorcery tree. And honestly, sorcery tree is a viable tree in my opinion. Domination isn't that viable and this resolve tree also there's nothing really there. So it's a good secondary option I guess but it doesn't beat inspiration tree. And then biscuit delivery with approach velocity. Now some of you guys might be like what is that dude? Like why are you building this and just like li hear me out on this one. Shivana's initial clear, just straight up for biscuit delivery. Shivana's initial clear, a full clear is not that easy. She gets quite low. She takes quite a lot of damage and it gets kind of risky towards the crux uh, part of your clear. So with that biscuit delivery, you have to remember that um, Shivana is a mana-less champion. So champions without mana restore will heal 20% missing health from just one biscuit. You will get it at three minutes. You clear, um, if you're full clearing your camps, you clear, uh, that's probably, that's the top side of the map. So you're going to start blue buff into Grump, Wolves, um, Raptors, Red buff, and then Krugs. That is the clear. And then you will 
clear red buff at about three minutes so you'll then gain your biscuit you will get very low after clearing your red buff approximately like 10 percent health 15 percent health maybe then this biscuit kicks in it gains you a lot of extra health and will allow you to easily clear the krog amp as well to um finish off your full clear that's a very big thing. Also, another thing to remember with Biscuit is you can use it um, in, con in conjunction with your refillable potion to heal a lot of health back in 1v1 situations. So, let's say you're like 1v1 in the enemy jungler at like level 5 and you would have like a Biscuit in your inventory with like a refillable potion. There's a lot of healing you can get back that way. So, like if you get low, you pop your Biscuit. You have to make sure you use it when you get low because it bases on missing health. So as soon as you hit like 20% health, you pop the biscuit and it will start really regening you really quickly. Plus, if you have a lot of base health, that will be a lot of health that you're actually gonna gain back because it's based on your health. So yeah, that's so much healing and it allows me to win so many 1v1 situations, just having that biscuit extra that it actually is pretty insane. And if you think about it, if you really think about it now, the really the thing what I was looking for to make any of this work is up because of approach velocity. Approach velocity gains you 10% movement speed toward near uh, towards nearby enemy ally. Jesus Christ, I can't talk right now. Gains you 10% movement speed towards nearby ally champions that are movement impaired or enemy champions that you impair. Now, ally champions that are movement impaired are nice because then you could potentially like swoop in a little faster if um, if they get slowed or any or like anything like that. But the main thing here is enemies that you impair. Movement speed impair means um, it works from your frozen mallet, and frozen mallet is a core item on Shivana right now. She, it's an insanely good item to pick up. Plus, it will permanently on your auto attacks impair someone's movement. So, meaning as soon as you hit someone with frozen mallet, you're gonna get the approach velocity move speed out of it. Plus, then if you have like any type of other items, like maybe a black cleaver or like a trinity force, you will gain the extra phage effect from that as well. Meaning that it's literally impossible for them to get away from you if they flash away. You just run after them like it's that simple it's actually crazy so this is really the one you want and then to combine that with any other one out of these that's actually good and that just helps you a lot is biscuit because it's really really good it allows you to more like more easily get the full clear in it was still possible without biscuit don't get me wrong you can definitely do it without the biscuit but it's just a lot safer it prevents you from getting invaded because as soon as you get invaded and you're quite low the likelihood uh, of you actually dying instantly when you're like level 3 and the enemy jungler is also level 3 are very low. So they will maybe do like 10% of your damage with the, like at most with their highest burst uh, hit. And then you pop the biscuit and you start healing back. So you actually have a chance, uh, like a fighting chance. Also, if you are defensively, then you can see them coming, which means you can preemptively pop your biscuit and it can give you a lot of health back to actually give you a chance in those one of you one situations. So Biscuit is a lot safer of an option. Now, some of you guys might be like, well, if you don't need Biscuit, then why would you get Biscuit instead of the Magical Footwear? Let me talk about Magical Footwear on junglers, guys. Come on. Um, you're literally giving up boots for the first 10 minutes of the game as a jungler, which means you lose clear speed because you're not going to get to your camps as fast because you don't have boots. You lose gank potential because you're not going to get to the lanes as fast because you lose speed. Like, there's so much you lose by... by, by getting magical footwear on a jungler it's a very good one to pick up if you're playing mid lane top lane 80 carry even doesn't matter you don't have to roam as much you're not walking around the map as much as a jungler is so please 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 don't ever on any jungler go magical footwear it's just not worth it so that's really all i had to say about that this is the option the room page i would go on shivana 100 percent of the time apart from maybe the tenacity here switch but yeah if you have any questions on it remarks on it Make sure to put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those for you. And let's move into the item build now. Let's switch here. Uh, not that one. Right. Let me put Shivana in this one. And then starting items. Now, starting item on Shivana is pretty easily. It's a machete with the refillable potion. Um, I mean, if you want to be really safe, then you could go triple health potion as well. It is kind of a trade-off if you don't go biscuit delivery, if you want to go sorcery for some reason, and like with Gathering Storm to scale better, then that could be a thing. But personally, I think the refillable potion is most gold efficient, so I want to pick that up, and then the biscuit will allow me to be very safe as well. So then uh, the combination of those two will easily allow you to go for this every time, and you'll be completely safe, no problem. Now, moving on. Your initial back, your first back, will always be the Red Smite combination with your boots. Again, those boots, those early, early boots where you don't want magical footwear. Get those boots. 
It will allow you to get through um, your jungle clear faster because you have 25 extra movement speed. But plus, it will also uh, allow you to gank faster, maybe invade faster. A anything like that is very, very nice. Now, at this point, you just want to complete your jungle item pretty much as fast as possible because this is going to give you m the majority of your damage uh, early on. Basic attacks deal 4% of the target's maximum health and bonus physical damage. That's a, a lot of extra damage. Um, it is in physical damage. This will uh, go into a build later on as well. It gets, also gives you 50% attack speed, which is really good on Shivana. So you auto attack, then Q, you get the... Um, the um, press the attack one. Jesus, why could I not come on that one? Um, get to press the attack one, and then you literally just E and keep auto attacking him, and he just loses his entire HP bar in like two seconds. Any enemy, really, because it's HP based damage from your E and from this at the same time. Then your boots are going to get upgraded into either Ninja Tabai or Mercs. Again, Mercs uh, combine well with the Tenacity Rune in your tree to make sure you get the uh, CC reduction into heavy, heavy CC comps. And in other cases, you just go Ninja Tabai. Because they just block the most damage, really. That's the only reason. It's 10% base, uh, basic attack damage. It's just insanely high. That's a lot of damage blocked. And since, um, I mean, veins and all that are pretty common now, then they actually block a lot of damage from those champions. Like you, the hyper carry Kogma vein builds right now. Definitely, definitely ninjas are very good. And then, of course, your main core item to follow that up is the um, Frozen Mallet. It gives you 700 health, 30 attack damage, which is good. Uh, attack damage on Shivana skills pretty damn well because of her, uh, like her 80 scaling on Q and uh, the way it works. So definitely a good item. Plus it gives you the stick potential to enemies because Shivana does not have any hard CC herself. She has some CC in her ultimate to when you drag people with you, but that's about all the CC she has. So if you don't have a red buff, Frozen Mallet, like without frozen mallet you will not have any way of actually sticking with people and frozen metal just allows you that and it's just a really good item on shivana so that's your core setup now after this there are pretty much two build paths you can go into you can go into the tanky shivana which is a bit more of a, like i get a bit more of safe one but not really I, I guess we'll get into it like you can go tank so you can now start building like random ones you can literally at this point press like armor if you need some armor items, you can go like random ones, which is a good item. Maybe Thornmail. Um, Stone Plate's very good for both situations. And Deadman's Plate, like those are great armor items, all of them. They all work very well. And it's just, it's just that simple. You just pick whatever armor item you, you feel suits the situation best. Because like this is against high crit. This is against like fully decoms, which just give you straight up um, Grievous Wounds as well. So if they have like uh, healing champions of, of anything. So like a cane, for example, with a Rast form. Thornmill is a very good item into that. Stoneplate is a very good hybrid item. It gives you 80 armor, 80 magic resist whilst you're in like three enemies or, or, or like more. Which is usually your situation because you are going to dive into the enemy team with your ultimate a lot. And then Deadman's Plate is a very good item to give you an extra move speed boost whilst also giving you armor and health. That's pretty much your options for like armor. Then you have obviously the magic resist ones. Against certain ones, Adaptive Helm is good. And then Spirit of Visage could be good against certain ones. You can even go with like a uh, Maw because she skills really well with attack damage. And then if you want to be a bit more offensive and still go for like a tanky damage, I guess, then Maw could be decent as well. But yeah, that's pretty much if you want to really go tank and really play it very safe and just go be the tank of your team, be the like the solid uh, foundation rock type tank of your team, then all these items can be very useful. Now, I say that um, like kind of iffy because i really don't like this build i feel like i feel that i become more and more like useless towards the end of parts of the game sure you are very tanky and sure you are like able to soak up a lot of damage but they can pretty much ignore you which is the really like painful part sure you have a lot of hp scaling damage as well still like you still have your jungle item and you still have your e it will still do a good amount of damage but nowhere near compared to the build i personally go with and i personally find a lot better and that build is going for the Black Cleaver as a next item. Wait. Oh, I still have it on Magic Resist. The Black Cleaver. So this is your core right now. Oh, uh, what, what is going on? All right, so this is your core right now. Let me just, um, I guess, drop it like that. This would be tank setup items. Just random tank items is really all you need. And then this is your core. Now, Black Cleaver works really well into this build. I'm just going to put it right there. Black Cleaver works really well into this build because, um, as I said earlier, this is 
scaling damage of your phys like scaling physical damage, bonus physical damage. So uh, the four percent of the target's max health every time you auto attack will be bonus physical damage, meaning you need armor pen to get through certain armor, or it will not be as effective. So the Black Cleaver is where this kicks in, really, because this is going to give you insane armor spread on the target. And since Shivana gets so much, um, so many procs so fast of the Black Cleaver, as soon as you walk into range of someone and auto attack Q him, he'll pretty much instantly be fully stacked out on the Black Cleaver, which is an insane damage burst because that combines really well with your, um, with your press the attack. So you, you just hit someone with uh, auto attack Q, get the press the attack, and then you start just decimating their H HP bar. Like this has got a 100 to zero someone in like a matter of seconds, like one to two seconds they're just gone because they lose all their armor really fast. And then you just like walk over them with your HP scaling damage. Plus, if you combine Cleaver with Approach Velocity and Frozen Mallet, there is not a chance in hell they're ever gonna get away from you. Because um, you, you hit someone with Frozen Mallet, you get Approach Velocity, but you also get the effect from Phage from your Cleaver, which in turn just speeds you up towards them even more. And then there's n they, can, they can flash away, they can try, but like you're still gonna be slow for a little bit and you're still gonna catch up to them. So it's really, really insane combination. And to stack that up even more, I really like to get a Blade of the Rune King, like pretty much every game. I mean, if you're not if you're facing a bunch of squishies, then Blade of the Rune King isn't the best item. It's then better to go for um, maybe just a straight damage item in the form of uh, like a Bloodthirster, even or an Infinity Edge. Like you can really go that damage heavy on Shivana or to make it work. But also the Ma is where this is a really good um, item to kick in. If you need some magic resist in this type of build, Jesus Christ. If you need some magic resist here, you can definitely pop that in instead of the blade if you don't really need like more of this HP scaling damage. Even though right now it's kind of leaning more towards like a tanky tanky meta with like more tanky jungler. So blade is usually the better option. But even if, if that's not the case, if you're facing more squishies, then a maw can really be a good item in this slot as well. It gives you a good amount of magic resist as well to round this out with. And then you will still have this damage item. Now, something you do have to know about this build is if you have these five items, the blade with this setup, you can solo Baron at like, you can get these five items at about 23, 24 minutes in game on average if you play it well enough. You can solo Baron straight up. Like, it's not even a problem. You can easily just, hop, boom, go into the Baron pit and solo it in like 20 seconds, 25 seconds. It's really crazy how much, how much power that gives you. Like, you can... You don't need your team to solo to do Baron. That's so big. Like you can pick up a pink ward in your spare slot because you don't need anything in that slot. You can have five items and go do Baron. Like how strong is that? It's gonna win, be able to win you so many games, especially especially towards the lower stages of the Elos. So because people there don't really know Baron calls too well, if you know what I mean. Like they they tend to do some random shit instead of doing Baron. Like chase someone for across the map for like five minutes. Who knows? This build just allows you to solo Baron. That's that's crazy to think about. The, the, a champion soloing Baron is not that common. There's maybe like six champions in the game that can do it. So that, this is the item setup. And then to finish this build off, some of you might be like, wait, that's a bit damage heavy right on Shivana. Well, it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't. Because you do get a lot of health from your Frozen Mallet. 700 HP from that. Plus the 400 health you get from your Black Cleaver. Also, you have to keep in mind that Blade of the Rune King gives you 12% lifesteal on top of that. So you will be healing back whilst you're going in and fighting people. You also have Triumph. As soon as you get the kill, you're going to uh, gain a 12% missing health back every time. You're going to kill people really fast with this build setup. Because this shreds maximum HP. Whilst this shreds current health. And then your E also shreds maximum health. So that combination will shred them completely down. Because then the, the spike will go from the max health to the current health and then boom you, you just you just burst them all the way down really fast and you might be like that, that that's actually just really ta like that's not tanky enough but it's actually insanely tanky because you life steal so much because you deal so much damage and then also if you're passive that will if you like kept up your dragon pressure you're gonna have a passive that gives you about like 30 to 40 armor and magic resist and then to combine that with this final item the stone plate in this build will give you 40 armor and 40 magic resist but then if you dive in which you will like your shivana you you want to dive in you gain the extra 40 bonus armor and magic resist you're gonna have 80 armor and magic resist from this item about 30 to 40 from your passive if you kept up dragon pressure enough so that's 120 ish armor and magic resist from one item and your passive 
All you have to do besides that is have some health, right? Like frozen mallet, cleaver, that's it. You're good, right? That's 200 armor, 200 magic resist, you dive into the enemy team. And if you don't have enough health, you pop stone blade. It's that simple. You pop stone blade, you get like 3000 extra health because this build approximately gives you 3000 health. Approximately, I'm not sure, to, um, off the top of my head. 6000 health, 200 armor, 200 magic resist, good luck, you know? It's a really tanky build, like you can dive in with your dragon form, E someone, Q, instantly pop, pep, uh, pop your stone plate. You would have half HP their entire team with that combo with the EQ and then blade and all that damage. Straight up. Insane burst damage. You should try it out. If, like, it doesn't work out for you or maybe you're not farming too well, then this is a safer option just going straight tank because you will still have a plenty of damage with your E and this Blood Razor combination and you can go for Mallet and all that instead. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions on this build... Make sure to ask them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. And also, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to thumbs up. Get this video out there. It means a lot. And yeah, let's get right into the gameplay now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Shivana, obviously, into a Lee Sin. Which is honestly quite a difficult matchup for Shivana early game. Uh, because um, your first clear on Shivana is garbage. Like, it's really bad. So if he invades you, mids like your first initial full clear, then that's really the place where he can like put you behind. And if you get put behind on Shivana and he keeps like this, the, the, a good amount of pressure on you, there's really nothing you can do in the game anymore. Like you are just out instantly. So that's, if you want to counter Shivana, just invade her, pick a good early game jungler, wreck her, fuck her up. That's all you gotta do. Anyway, yeah, apart from that, as soon as it gets to like, Level 6, 5, 6 ish. As if you get through your first clear, pretty much that's the stage you just win the game on Shivana, really. She is a really strong champion against like early game junglers. If you're versus another scaling champion, like Jax, for example, then like you can walk into some trouble still later on because he does beat you like the entire game through. The only thing you beat him with early on is a slightly faster initial clear speed. But his clear speed on the other end is a lot safer, so then, yeah. But, yeah, the initially, you want to start with Eon Shivana, like, always. I see people starting W, I see people starting Q, I don't know about all those people, but... E gives you the most damage, like, you can get straight up, because it just scales off of max HP damage on the camps. So, yeah, it's the best thing you can do, really. After your E, you pick up your Q to make sure you kill Grom faster, because then you can um, auto-attack, then Q, and then auto-attack again. Really fast, with your E on the target, so it will burst it very quickly, again, because of the max HP scaling. And that's the way you kill it really fast. And again, right here, same thing counts. Your E will kill the wolf, the main wolf really fast. And then that way, you can just, like, clear it pretty, if pretty efficiently. The first couple of levels on Shivana will always get you quite low, like, her early clear, early clear is just, like, hard, man. Like, you lose a lot of health in that clear. You also have to make sure that you make sure, uh, like, that you, um, use the tricks properly. Now, right here, since I am facing an early game jungle a likely sin, I am being very careful, and I'm gonna try to, like, ward that and prevent this from happening exactly. Now right here, I see him on my ward quite early on, so I'm kind of dragging the red buff back a little bit, waiting for it to not completely reset, and then ask for mid, my mid laner to quickly show up. I get my E cooldown again, and again, the E auto attack Q cool, uh, combo bursts the red buff for quite a lot of health really fast, and then I have to smite to finish it off, and that's pretty much just counter to Lee Sin invade, uh, like, completely. If I did not go for the E on Shivana start, if I started with anything else, that invade would have worked. So this is really important for you to remember. You need that E to be able to clear it fast enough to where the three camp Lee Sinclair, as you can see, the red buff, wolf, blue, Lee Sinclair, does not, uh, like, beat you in time, if you know what I mean. The, the, it, like, yeah. Because if you don't start with E, you're gonna lose a couple seconds, and that will be the most important seconds for you to, uh, like, get wrecked in, really. All right, here I get really low. Usually, I will use this biscuit to make sure that I um, have the extra health to survive. But because Lee Sin kind of stalled me out a little bit and um, I took a little longer, I got a little bit more regen out of it. So that way, I didn't have to use that biscuit. But right now, I still use the biscuit because I do want to look for the gank on the Gnar. 
I got told that he doesn't have his flash anymore. He's still kind of looking to push the wave or maybe farm a little bit. And all you got to do at that point, if he doesn't have his flash, is like hit your E, walk up, auto attacking a couple times. It's just a free kill in general. That biscuit really, really key right there to making able to that, to making that play work because I was very low, but the biscuit restores 20%. Of like my missing health or something like that 20 percent of your missing health or something like that and since i was very low lost like 95 percent of my health bar it will restore a lot and that will matter a lot it's a very very good thing on shivana i mean i explained it as well earlier so yeah now right here first initial back usually what i will always go for is the red smite with boots it's the best back you can get because boots give you the um like the movement speed you need to walk through your jungle camps faster Sure, Shivana does have her W, but you can't always rely on that. You definitely need to make sure you get those boots early. Because it is just more consistent, it's faster, it helps you with ganks, it helps you with farming your jungle faster. And yeah. And then Red Smite, of course, to help you sustain yourself. Because Shivana does hit the camps a lot with her W and just spells in general. So you get a lot of health back from that as well. And that's just the way to do it. Alright, here, that's pretty much the stage where you don't lose any health anymore on Shivana. Like, I got past my first clear. And as you can see, I'm pretty much full HP throughout the entire rest of the clear. I have refillable potions to sustain back what I need to sustain back, and that's all that matters. Right here, I just kind of, I guess, partially take some farm from mid lane. Now, on Shivana, the big thing as well, as you can see right here, I am looking to pressure this dragon. I was looking for some pressure on it. Um, the Camille was walking up for some weird reason, I'm not sure why. But yeah, I'm just looking towards... Stalling it out a little bit here and just doing the scuttle crap. It's not quite efficient to do scuttle crap on Shivana, but I'm like, like waiting for my smite cooldown. Also kind of waiting to like walk around. I have my control ward that I bought earlier to make sure that this isn't warded and that I can do this dragon. Dragon on Shivana, very important because your passive skills really well with dragon. You deal more damage to it. You get a lot tankier after you kill the dragon and you have to keep the dragon pressure going. As you can see, I clear it fairly easily, especially with the red smite if you have the red smite and... Like, or like, yeah, your skirmisher saber. Not necessarily the red smite. Alright, here, I kind of want to bait it out of the pit a little bit more so Lee Sin can't throw a random Q over. That's the way, like, Lee Sin steals it. And I just pick up the dragon right here. Very nice. Alright, here, I see the... I pick, just pick up the plant to get my health back. I was a plant right there. Might as well take that away. And then uh, my blue will respawn soon as well. So I definitely want to look towards picking that up too. Now, I only saw the Lee Sin. I had no idea that Camille was in that brush. I didn't want to really go for that Lee Sin play because Katarina was pushed in and Yasuo would be able to react a lot faster. Even though I'm a level up on Lee Sin, it's not worth it. As well, uh, by the way, I don't like you don't want to ever really get blue on Shivana. It's useless on you. But in this specific game, I have a Katarina mid lane, which like there's nothing I can do with that. Like this, uh, I mean, it's more actually more useful to give blue to me than it gives to Katarina it's, at that point. It's really, yeah. Because I get a lot more experience out of it, that's why. Like, it's useless for both of us, really, so. But if you have a mid lane, like, if your mid laner needs blue, always, always, always give blue. Unless they're, fin like, inting, then it's not worth it. But for the rest of the time, it's just worth it just not get it. Because blue would be useless on Shivana. Alright, here I'm level 6. I am kind of looking towards pressuring this. Lee Sin doesn't have his kick up, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm looking towards maybe slowly making a play. I was trying to get the Lee Sin with that ultimate right there. It's a pretty troll play, I guess. They, like, question ping me a lot. But they were paying so much attention to me from the Darius behind that um, he came in with the clean teleport play. And then we just pick up a triple kill. All right, here, my, uh, all I did with that ult really was trying to get the Lee Sin with the knockback. But Lee Sin dashed out of it, so it was quite well played on his part, I gotta say. But yeah, it worked out for me. I stalled enough time for the Darius play. I was um, talking to him on voice comms. And he told me, like, I'm gonna teleport behind him, I'm gonna teleport behind him. And because of that, I was, like, kind of dicking around there and just getting hit by some skill shots to make sure they stay up front and they don't really go back really instantly, if you know what I mean. So, that's the reason for that. That's the reason why that looks so janky. Now, right here, I have my jungle item completed. That is a massive, massive damage spike for Shivana. And I also still have this biscuit right here. By the way, something to remember, you can use this biscuit combined with the health potion. Or like refillable potion rather to come like to, to scale up the healing really fast. So if you get like low in certain fights or anything like that in like team fights or maybe 1v1 fights. You can use, pop both at the same time and get a lot of health back that way. That's really really good. Not right here. My, all my camps are up. I'm just really looking to full clear. Just getting like uh, quickly getting through this. 
Like, you clear really fast on Shivana, so you're fine. Again, bot lane turret's already down, so bot lane tried, started to rotate somewhere. At this point, Katarina should kind of be walking towards bot lane. I'm not sure why she's walking mid lane, because bot lane just took over that lane, and Katarina can get a solo lane into maybe the AD carry, or even the Yasuo in a solo lane. Either way, she should not be really going mid lane at this point, but yeah. Now, the fight is breaking out in mid lane right here, so I'm kind of like, I was looking towards this Gromp, but because the fight was kind of going on, I was like, alright, I kind of have to react to this. I use my ultimate over the wall here to get the distance behind them right now, to get positional advantage. And then I just like, kind of walk up. I have red buff to slow them down. I do get the Yasuo, I barely didn't get the Camille because I barely didn't do enough damage. Lee Sin does land a nice Q on me and then um, he kills me sadly. Not too much I could do about that at that point anymore. Ezreal does come in from the side here, um, kills someone, kills the Katarina, and then kills the Zaya as well. So it kind of eventually turned out not too great for us, because Lee Sin landed a really nice Q and then killed me with it. Anyway, I mean, the trade was okay there, not too bad. Darius is walking back here. <laughs> Disrespecting the Lee Sin, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not... Okay, I'm... I'm look, look, realistically, look at his items. Look at how fat he is. I'm not sure what Lee Sin was thinking there. Like, to be honest. Now, wait. Actually, no. Dragon's not respawning yet. I'm not sure why I'm walking towards my Gromp right now, to be honest. Maybe I'm looking towards making a play on both sides. Because the reason I'm not sure about why I'm walking there is because there's really nothing else... Okay, well, yeah, so we walked up too far then. I guess that's why. Maybe I saw him or something. I don't know. The reason is because the top lane, ca the top lane camps were more likely to respawn. Plus, it was most likely that our bot lane or anything would rotate upwards faster. So, it would have been better to be top lane, top, lane, top lane at that point. So, I don't know why they saw or anything. Maybe just made a mistake. Maybe I didn't think about it. Anyway, yeah. Yasuo is up too far. We just kill him straight up. There's not much Yasuo can do against that, really. I have so much chase potential on uh, Shivana that there's really no escaping him. Again, blues up. At this point, I'm just going to full clear back towards tops. Actually, I'm not going to full clear back. I think I'm going to do wolves and then look for the uh, dragon. I'm guessing. Yeah, the Infernal Dragon. I think it's an Infernal Dragon. No, it's a mount another Mountain Dragon. Okay. Fair enough. But again, Dragon pressure on Shivana is important. You have to keep that up. Now right here, Lee Sin is a very annoying champion. I do barely get it, but uh, it does cost him a support's life. He polymorphed Lee Sin very well and stalled it out very nicely. So that was well played on the support's part. I mean, Lee Sin is a hard champion. The reason Lee Sin is a very risky champion to like, try to go for smite 1v1s against, even though I'm like a level up on him, is because of his Q. He does have a lot of uh, like pressure with that, and yeah, kind of have to respect that. All right, here, Camille does come in. I like get CC, like hard CC by the Gnar, so I kind of went out of position on that play, and that kind of backfired on me real quick. So yeah, be very careful with that. A 1v4, you're not winning that yet. Emphasizes on yet. 2-2-5, I have 100 CS, which is not too bad. My solo laners are, like, CSing very poorly, though. That doesn't bode well for that. They are, they have a decent lead, like, 5k gold lead. Very nice, but our team definitely outskills their team, so we have that going for us. Plus, they are full AD, so we can just stack some armor and we're good. Right there, Gnar barely gets out with the recall, sadly. But, yeah. Clear my camp here. Darius is mid lane, so I'm just gonna push in top lane from just all the way. Just get the pressure going here. If Darius was, like, not right there fighting, then I would not clear his top side. Because then it wouldn't be worth it to clear his top side. But yeah. I'm just gonna keep pushing because there's no way I'm gonna be in this fight in time. Um, I believe someone teleported in. Maybe not even... Actually, no. Gnar, uh, Gnar teleported towards top lane. But yeah, there was no, not a chance for me to get there fast enough because I was already top side right there. And yeah. Alright, here they're pressuring in mid lane. The Darius is teleporting in. I told Darius I will be on my way then if he teleports in. So I just walk up. Darius is very, very tanky with the items he has right now, so he definitely has a lot of pressure. He does get the kill on the um, Ezreal and the Asuo, and that's actually pretty good for us. <laughs> Alright, I'm just trying to chase this Camille down, really. There's, like, she's out of position, and I kind of want to get the kill on him. We do get the kill. Right, my Grump is up, my Wolves are up. I'm kind of just looking to force, force farming your camps again. It's a very, thing, a very important thing to remember to keep that farm going. Shivana is a very farm heavy champion, a very scaling champion, so if you can keep the farm up, keep your level advantage going, then that's the way you're gonna win the game. 
All right, here I pop my um, my spying orb, really, to um, or my spying orb, whatever it's called, to um, check if I don't walk over any wards. His red just respawned, so I kind of look towards going go for that. But Yasuo was right there. I wasn't necessarily afraid of Yasuo because I could easily one v one the Yasuo, but any type of backup would have been a problem. So that's the reason I just ulted out. Using your ult just like randomly doesn't matter because on Shivani you have your ult back really fast. So if you need to use your ult to like hop a wall really fast or anything like that, just do it. Because it's it's really actually just worth doing. And yeah. People like I see way too many Shivanas hang on to the ultimate for way too long for no reason at all. Because I don't know. Because I don't know. <laughs> it, it's just such a short cooldown. It's already back up right now. Alright here, I'm trying to stand in between Lee Sim and the Q. Or like the Q and the, the dragon. But then again, he still gets a smite steal on me. So that's kind of unfortunate. It's only a one level difference right there. So it's not like not much I can do really. I mean, sure, I should have it technically. But it's quite hard. It's really hard. So I get that. I pick up the red buff here. Oh, I do see a Lee Sin and an Ezreal. And I just quickly like press my ult over the wall to get over. I, see the, I, I know the camp's right there. So if I just ult over and get past those minions... Then if Lee Sin throws like a Q on it, then it's not going to hit me, it's going to hit the camp. So that way I'm pretty safe either way. And if he does follow that or does go over the wall with anything, then Darius will be right there to follow it up. So it was pretty safe. Alright here, they did pressure them out for that play. So we can definitely go for the 20 minute Baron. It just respawned, like it just spawned. And Sivana has a really fast Dragon Clear. You do a lot of damage to that, dra uh, to that Baron, sorry. So you can definitely clear it very fast. I think from the damage done right there, I probably did about half. And then the rest came from mostly Zaya. So yeah, good pressure right there. And that's a 20 minute Baron. Also on Sivana, by the way, there's a good thing to remember. You can easily solo Baron with four items. Uh, well, five items, including your boots. Which I think is in this game as well. You'll probably be able to see it later. It requires like a couple of items, but you'll see it. It's a very, very powerful play that you can make. All right, I'll go back here actually. It's a very powerful play that you can, uh, you can make. Now right here, let me first go back a little bit further. Alright, slow it down. So fight's breaking out. They chased a little too far, I think, or I'm not sure what happened. Maybe overextended a little bit too far. Darius has a lot of pressure because he's very tanky, he's very far ahead, quite fed. And then um, Delulu does die to Ezreal. Now right here, I'm with Zaya in position. I'm standing in front of Zaya as much as possible so she can't really stun or go for the stun. Darius does die here. But, but I'm, since I'm level 14, I have, like, my Frozen Mallet. I am very strong. Camille goes in on the Zaya. They really... I need to take make the most advantage of the fact that they will try to go for the Zaya first. And then I also saw Katarina walking down. So I kind of had to stall a little bit more and just, like, make sure the pressure is there. Get them low enough for Katarina to come in. And then just sweep, kill everything. Because with a reset, she can easily just clean it up. And that's just the way that fight worked. So by just stalling and just trying to stay near my Zaya, because that would be their prim primary target really, which I, I don't understand really because she's 2 and 7, but that's been their trend, so mostly they just try to focus the easy kills, the AD carries that are a lot squishier than like me on level 15 and like 3000 health, so yeah. I then pressure it down a little bit. I don't want to really, I didn't really force the kills down because I didn't want that, I wanted to get them to get low. So I got them low and then start like split pressuring them or like split um, focusing them on damage wise. So that as soon as the Katarina comes in, she has a fast initial kill. So she gets a reset after reset after reset after reset that way. So if you have like a Katarina on your team or anything that resets like a Kha'Zix maybe, which doesn't really happen because you're a jungler and Kha'Zix is also a jungler. But anything that really resets, if you can get them low that way, then you can set up properly for the reset champion to come in and then sweep it really quickly. So that's really what I did there. Level 15, I have 188 CS. I definitely need to, like, I definitely kept that CS going. This game specifically, though, my jungling was, like, my jungle clearing was kind of poor. My invading wasn't really, like, going down because they had a lot more pressure. They were, like, Lucin was putting out a good amount of pressure to make it quite hard. But then my top laner roamed a lot with his teleport, so I got a couple waves top lane. And then my mid laner also roamed quite a bit or something. I don't even know. So I kind of got a lot of waves from that, and that's why I have, like... The most CS in the game at the moment. Mostly because of that. Alright, here time to recall. I am sitting on 2300 gold, which is going to be my finished cleaver. It's a massive, massive power spike to get that cleaver. Like, 
insane. The reason for it is because it scales really well with your jungle item. Your jungle item does uh, HP scaling damage, physical like based on HP, but then physical damage. So if you get that cleaver, you'll have more stick potential. You have the frozen mana to slow it down, but then also the cleaver to speed yourself up a little bit more. Combine that with the approach velocity you have, and then easy as it is, you know. Right there, I pick up, also pick up the recurve bow. Oh wait, actually I'll go back here. This is quite um, quite close one. So they, they, they're like chasing the Darius down, he's 12-6. He has a lot of tank items, they're full AD, so he has a lot of straight armor items. Redemption comes in clutch, heals the Darius up, then his Q comes in clutch to heal him even more. He gets really low, gets Lulu ulted barely in time, I just ult in, I E them all. Like my E does a lot of base damage as well, so I just burst them quite easily, the squishy ones at least. And then at this point I have a lot of chase potential. With the Darius, with the Zetman's Blade, and then we just walk in and clear the rest of their team. We can just keep going. Darius and I are both very, very tanky. So we don't really have to be afraid of anything. We can just walk in and keep going. Yeah, so it's that doesn't matter. And then we just pressure that down. It was a very, very close play. Darius barely survived that one to actually make that work. And 4, 2, and 11, which is not too bad. I do have uh, 200 CS though, which is really, really good. And I also have like three dragons, I believe. Two dragons. No, I missed that. I missed one smite on the dragon, yeah. I have two mountain dragons. That's really, really good. Also, by the way, um, I think because the clear is in here, the, the solo baron, it doesn't matter if you have mountain dragons or not. It helps, but you don't need mountain dragons to solo it. Because I, I, I'm pretty sure I did solo it in this game, so you'll see it. But yeah, that's just all I'm saying right now. Oh wait, actually I'll go back. This is like a, um, a clear example of just how strong Shivana is. I ult in. I initially go for the, the target to help, like... The, the squishy ones, like, to get get the Camille out of the way. Darius does die to that, but then again, he does have the bleed damage on it. I can just keep going. I get Lulu ulted. I'm not sure why that was still up, and it, she didn't use it on Darius, but hey. Now right here, Yasuo dies, dives in on, like, 2 HP because I was quite low. Then I kill him as well really quickly because he was in my E, which makes uh, puts that thing on him. And then as soon as I Q him, he's going to take a serious amount of damage just straight up. So he lost, like, 20 to 5% of his health instantly. And then right here is red buffs up, so I'm kind of looking towards going for this. Also, the dragon's respawning soon, and so I'm kind of stalling with the red buff to go for the dragon as well. Now right here, the Ezreal's kind of chasing, I'm not sure why. And he's, he went AP Ezreal, by the way. Because, like, they have a full AD comp, and they just wanted to have some AP or something, I don't know. But right here, he chases too far, I just, like, walk up, hit him once, and he's just dead. Now I see the Lee Sin here as well. I mean, he thinks I'm low, but I'm really not that low. I just E, I Q him pretty much, and he's just dead. Like, straight up. I like I'm just a raid boss at this point. I deal so much damage. And then with like Lulu shields and just like triumph in general. Like there's nothing they can do. I'm 8, 2, and 12 now. Like apart like that fight I got four kills. That's insanely good. Alright here, my dragon form is about to run out, so I kinda really quickly wanted to use the E on the camp right there to pretty much instantly burst it down. And then after that pick up another dragon to get my uh, passive to have a lot of extra armor again. Right now, I'm not sure if I can see it from my passive. I believe that's like three dragons right now, so that's like five armor and magic resist per dragon. So that's like an extra 15 armor and magic resist, and I have like 10 base or something like that. So I get like 30 or 40 armor and magic resist, uh, armor and magic resist from just my passive. That's also why this build works, by the way. I have a lot of health from Mallet, and then a lot of health on top of that from Cleaver. And then because of my passive, getting uh, the little bit of extra armor and magic resist from that will still put me at a good amount of armor and magic resist whilst also having a lot of damage to make it work. Right here, um, I'm just kind of looking to get some vision control, maybe some wards. I do have the sweeping trinket, so I can definitely use that. But then the listen walks off towards the Darius a little bit too far. And then I just wanted to react to that faster instead of actually going for a clears. Baron's up in one minute, so I'm definitely looking towards doing that by myself, really. Uh, so I'm recalling right now to just get to that Baron, I think. Pick up a chain vest here, yep. Oh, actually, I recall to stop Yasuo, yeah, 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 yeah. So he walks up too far, he, he, like, he was split-pushing, which is, I mean, probably the right play for him to make. But he was split-pushing that, and then I just walk up really and kill him. As soon as you get one auto-attack on the Yasuo, or anyone really, then there's not really any escaping from them. Not even the auto-attack, you just have to get the Blade of the Rune King proc on someone, and they're just dead. Like, it's straight over. Right here, I'm just pushing in top lane a little bit more. I believe this is where I solo Baron. I don't know. It should be very close right now. We see the Lee Sin, so I'm, I think I'm 
Maybe like checking where Lee Sin is earlier or something in order to do it. There's a ward in the pit right there. What am I doing? Just click the ward, my boy. Alright. I didn't want to like really do it right there because the Lee Sin does have a lot of steel potential. I mean, he is five levels down. But then again, if I'm gonna solo the Baron, I, I kind of wanted, like I told my team, I kind of wanted to solo the Baron because the game was going well enough with enough, like, good plays and um, not not really even that, just like a good enough showcase of how to play Shivana that I kind of wanted to use this as the uh, guide video or, or like the guide gameplay as I'm doing right now. So I kind of wanted to show you guys as well that I could, like, that I could solo it on Shivana with this build. So that's really the reason I told my team I wanted to get a chance to solo it. Even though we could have easily done Baron with the three of us, that's what I told my team. I just want I just want you guys to know that it's possible, you know? It's not always good, but in certain situations, knowing that it's possible helps a lot. Alright, there I do die, I go a little bit too deep, but... I'm not that tanky, because I don't go for the really tanky build in this specific game. Because I was quite far ahead, I caught a lot of CS. I have 281 CS, 10, 3, and 15. So I'm really, really far ahead on that point. And this is... Like, if you can get the ball rolling, then this is what happens every game with Shivana. But, it, yeah. Now, right here, I just jump in. I pretty much kill the Yasuo, and then I chase him. Like, as you can see, there's not a chance for him to escape me, because I have Mallet on him. Plus, I also have my uh, Black Cleaver to chase him down even more. And my W will then also chase. Plus, the Blade Active just catches it up. I use the Blade Active on him right there, and then, yeah. Now, right here, I back ping them. Because I wanted to solo the Baron. As you can see, look how easy this is. I mean, I have two Mountain Dragons, granted. I ha do have two Mountain Dragons. But as you can see, I barely lose any health. And I quickly burst this Baron. Like, very quickly burst this Baron. So all I ask my team to do is zone the Lee Sin. Which is what they do. And then, like, judging from the amount of health I have left, right? You can easily see that I did not need those two Mountain Dragons. Sure, it saved me, like, probably 15 seconds on actually killing the Baron. But, like, either way, it was such an easy, easy clear right there. I am full build, though. Um, it's not necessary to have your Deadman's Plate or, like, any item in this slot. The items you need are Ninja Tabai with your uh, Skirmish of Blood Razor and then a Black Cleaver with Mallet and uh, Blade of the Rune King in order to solo Baron. And the, the Deadman's Plate is just an added bonus. The best part of, uh, for, of, for this is having the armor part for the, for the Deadman's Plate. So if you have that, it's a lot safer. But without... A complete item in that slot, you're still able to do it with a good, like, 600 health left. At that point, if you don't have, like, any armor in that slot, you do need two smites for it. So that's something to remember. So you have to use one smite quite early after you lost some health to get some health back. And then also burst the Varen a little bit. And then uh, use the other smite later on when it gets back. That's the only thing. But if you have the chain vest, then you're fine. Then you don't, then just want having one smite is enough. Because, yeah, I mean, that's just the way it is. Now, here, 300 TS, I'm full build. I can just literally walk into their team at this point. Like, that's all I'm doing. It's just walk into their team, just whatever. Showing my dominance. Chasing the Camille a little bit too far here. I guess just for good measure. I have so much chase potential, really, that it's just easy. I hear just walking in. I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm so tanky. I have a Lulu behind me. There's nothing they can really do against me. And it's just gone. Like, it's over. I just pressure the turrets down, and that's pretty much the Shivana gameplay. It matters a lot to uh, keep the farm going, and just keep that pressure up. Get those dragons, very, very important to get those dragons. Get that armor magic from those dragons, and also the dragon effects, of course. And yeah, that's the Shivana game, really. I think we ended here. We ended here. Alright guys, if you've enjoyed this guide and learned anything from it, please, please, please make sure to hit the thumbs up below. It means a lot, it helps me a lot, and yeah. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel, feel free to subscribe. It's free, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's free. And um, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!